Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I remember um, back in the 70s when I was going to high school and the uh, early 80s when I was going to college studying chemical engineering and hearing the concerns about some that were going to run out of oil and what that might mean to the United States and mean to the world. And here we sit today as we've shifted from what used to be a, a scarcity mentality, certainly on oil and natural gas, now to an abundance mentality. Uh, the Bakken formation bleeds into Montana. We are seeing firsthand what's going on with hydraulic fracturing, with oil production, with natural gas production. I can tell you, we would like to produce more natural gas in Montana. Our natural gas productions have declined for lack of demand. And this intersection of, of the demand and also the, uh, the transmission issues and the pipeline issues that the Senator from Maine was painfully aware of last winter, uh, I, I believe as we move to an abundance mentality, as we gain more production, which increases the supply chain and pipelines, ultimately the person who wins is the American consumer, as we've seen what's happened with oil, where with the drop in oil prices, we're going to go from $3,100 per average household expense with oil to $1,900. That's a $1,200 a year for the average American household as a result of what's happened here in America and the shale play. Uh, the geopolitical implications are significant. I saw Senator Barrasso's chart. I was struck by that, uh, of uh, the dependency of the European nations on Russia for natural gas. I remember when we, I was serving back in the House in the last term, getting letters from uh, leaders from the European nations who were looking to America for energy leadership. How can we now start supplying natural gas to Europe instead of the dependence upon uh, the Putin regime? So I'm very excited about where this might lead to uh, in terms of global competitiveness. I was a manufacturing guy uh, for years. I had a, a day job in the private sector for 28 years before I came up here. I looked at operations in China. I managed operations in Asia Pacific. What this means, low energy and uh, low natural gas price and ability to export is great for global competitiveness to bring these manufacturing jobs back to America. And we can't underestimate, I think, the national security implications as well. So this is a very exciting discussion. It's, it's been a great hearing for me. Um, but I was struck, Mr. Eisenberg, you made a comment. And I guess let's bring it back to the scope. I've been up here at 40,000 feet. Why are we here in this hearing today? Because we're looking at the permitting process. That's the scope of this legislation. How do we create more certainty in this uncertain process about permitting? Mr. Eisenberg, I believe you said that regulatory uncertainty was, was it the number one issue? Currently, it is the most uh, cited issue that our members uh, would like to see Washington fix right now. Number one issue of your manufacturers? Yes. So um, I guess with my engineering background, I would look at what problem are we trying to solve here today? And I know we've kind of been circling the globe on a lot of things in this hearing, but we're looking at regulatory uncertainty, the number one issue for manufacturers and jobs here in this country. That's correct. And, and I would take it one step higher. We're talking about free trade also, right? I mean, this is the intersection of two sets of policies. Um, this is energy policy and this is trade policy. And, um, and, and you know, I, to, to, the, to, to Senator King's last point, the reason that the NAM came out the way that we did on this, and we are not for or against anything. We were founded 120 years ago, so the manufacturers could find markets to export to. Uh, export to. We believe that you're either for free trade or you're not, and we are. And so imposing some sort of delay or, 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 or cap or something like that would stand in the way of exporting just about anything, whether it's a Honda Civic or a big razor blade or energy. And that is why we've come out the way that we have on this issue, which is at the end of the day, on balance, free trade wins. Well, and I think we, we will have further debates about the merits of increasing exports in natural gas or not. But this legislation is about creating regulatory certainty in an uncertain environment. And uh, I think we want to keep the conversation focused there because that's what we're going to be voting on, on uncertainty in the regulatory process. Uh, Mr. Eisman, could you expand perhaps on the resources that are spent on the exporting permitting process, including NEPA, and how important certainty is for both energy security and the American taxpayer? So this is obviously not an inexpensive process. No manufacturer would take on this, this, uh, this without knowing that it's going to cost you quite a bit, both in terms of the upfront cost to actually do the environmental studies and all of the research and all of the background data, but also the, the cost of delay, right? I mean, at the end of the day, time is money, and the longer it takes, uh, the longer, um, the, mo the more you are spending to not do this. 
Um, so obviously, as you said, permitting certainty is what we're looking for. We're just looking to make sure that the rules of the road are there, that if we comply with them, we get an up or down answer so that we can control those costs and we can expect those costs and we know going in that there is an end, end of the road to, to, to this problem. Right. And Mr. Chairman, I too was taught in the House you don't run red lights, so I realize my time's up.